Welcome to a look at Trap Words, a word-based party game with a dungeon crawling theme. A big thank you to CGE for sending us a review copy of Trap Words to check out. Trap Words was designed by a team, including Jan Bresnia, Brezina, sorry, Jan Brezina, Martin Harbalik, and Michael Poserik. It features artwork by David Jablonski, Philip Mermack, Regis Torres, and Michaela Zaraova. It was originally released in 2018 and published in North America by Czech Games Edition, a.k.a. CGE. This word game plays four to eight players, and potentially more, with each game taking under an hour. This is a family weight game with a listed age of 8+. plus. Now, the MSRP on Trap Words is a nice low $19.95. A great price for a game that plays with big groups. Always nice to see really accessible party games at this price point. Also, as a note, there was another game now long out of print called Trap Words back in the 90s <laughs> from Mind Games International. And this is not that game, nor is it really in any way similar. No. So this version of Trap Words is a dungeon crawl themed team based word guessing game where teams are trying to advance deeper into the dungeon by guessing words without the torchbearer, a.k.a. the clue giver, mentioning any of the trap words which have been chosen ahead of time by the other team. As you get deeper into the dungeon, you may have to deal with curses. And your opponents will get to use more and more trap words. Now, the goal of the game is to be the first team to defeat the boss monster. To see what you get in a copy of this unique dungeon crawler, check out our Trap Words unboxing video on YouTube. So Trap Words comes in a small board game box, pretty much a standard small box size that a lot of companies use. Thank you for that. That contains way more stuff than you think you would need for a word-based party game. There's baggies, stands and standees, a pencils, sharpeners, um, a clear, easy to understand 12 page rule book, a four page example of play, which is great for teaching the concept of this game. Punch boards with torches, monsters and dungeon rooms, cool looking book like clue holders, and then a ton of cards, including boss monster cards, clue cards, and a hefty set of word cards. There's also a nice thick pad of trap sheets, which can also be downloaded from CG's website if you do ever happen to run out. Everything here is top-notch quality. Uh, the cardboard was literally falling off the punch boards when I was unboxing the video, and I love the design of the foldable clue books. My only real complaint is that the standees for both adventuring parties both use the same artwork but are in different colors, which I got to say is really a very minor quibble. So what are we doing with all this stuff? How do you play trap words? So you start to build a dungeon to explore, which is a set of rooms going left to right. A typical dungeon has five rooms that are numbered three, four, five, six, seven. Now the game does include additional tiles, giving you the numbers from one all the way up to 10. This lets you modify the difficulty of the game as these numbers represent how many trap words each team can pick. Both teams start in the first lowest numbered room. Players then select a monster to fight against. Put its card on the table and place the appropriate monster standing in the last room at the opposite end of the dungeon. Curses are then added to the dungeon if you choose to use them. These are randomly drawn and in a standard game placed in rooms five and six. Now it's recommended you don't use these at all in a teaching game and you always have the option to add more to more rooms if you want to make the game harder. It's always nice to see a game that has easy to use and understand mechanics like this that allows mm -hmm. you to customize your game's difficulty. Yeah, the dials on this game are fantastic. More games should come with this many, this much variability for difficulty setup. Now, players are split into two teams in whatever way they want. Now, each team must have at least two players. This game does not work with fewer than four players at all. It's just unplayable. It's not a case of it doesn't quite work or it feels bad. No, like you cannot play this game without at least four players. Now, one player on each team is going to be assigned to be the torch bearer and takes the torch token to indicate this. This is the player that's going to be giving the clues during this round. So please note, real torches are not recommended accessories, no matter how much you like to theme up and upgrade your game nights. Well, I got to admit, it kind of wants to get some kind of like cosplay LED one that you have to hold as the, as the clue giver. And like, that's a rule that you must be holding the torch while giving the rules. That would definitely help tie in the theme a little more. I'm, I'd be totally for that. Now, the next thing you do is I mentioned these like book like clue holders. They're hard to describe without images. I'm sorry. Um, the You pick which ones to use. So there's one set that's mundane and one set that's fantasy. 
One's going to reveal fantasy themes on the cards when you put them in, like troll, myth, and axe. The other set features more common words like elephant, submarine, and yo-yo. And those are all actual words from the game. So is yo-yo a common word anymore? I feel like nobody talks about yo-yos anymore. You know what? They did have a recent resurgence with the popularity of video apps like TikTok. And there were all kinds of people doing tricks with yo-yos. And there was that brief period where my kids each wanted a yo-yo. But that was a few years back. So I think it might have faded again. It's interesting. Every once in a while, yo-yos emerge from the depths and become super popular. And everyone wants a yo-yo. And everyone wants to learn how to walk the dog and, you know, uh, rock the baby. Rock the cradle. Rock the cradle. But then it disappears as as mysteriously yes. as it emerges the yo-yos are a magic thing they, it's kind of like they yo-yo in and out of popularity so each team then draws a word card and puts it in your book and looks at it so i say you pick which books put a clue card in it you make sure you draw face down and put it down so you can't see any of their words so on this is the word that the opposing team will be trying to guess this isn't for your team what you're going to do then is grab the the, the sheet the the trap word sheet and your team is going to write down a number of words that will be traps now the rules contain extensive rules on what makes for a legal trap and honestly i'm not going to get into the details of it here you're going to have to actually pick up the game and read the rules to figure that out so needless to say you're trying to come up with words likely to be said without removing any hope of them being able to offer clues Although, no, 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 you want to offer them no hope if you can. Like, if you can do it and get it so they can't say, there's, there's no semi-co-op here. You're not working together. You're not trying to leave an opening. No, you're trying to set up a solid defense. If you can come up with the right trap word so the opponents are completely stumped, all the power to you. Well, I, I assumed there were some rules that allowed you to, you know, that allowed some wiggle nope. room. Okay. No, no wiggle room. If you can come up with the proper words, it, it makes it very interesting. Now, once both teams have chosen their traps, the books are passed to the torchbearer on the other team, and the guessing begins. Now, the team that's furthest behind in the dungeon goes first, and in the case of a tie, one book out of every set is uh, lit up. I don't know how they, it's glowing uh, based on the artwork to indicate which team goes first in the tie. Now, in a guessing round, the sand timer is started, and the torchbearer begins to give clues to their team. Similar to valid trap words, there are also a set of restrictions that makes for valid clues, and again, I'll leave that for you to discover now the torchbearer's teammates are listening to these clues and get a total of five guesses as to what word the clue giver is trying to get them to say now the clue giver can say as much as they want they can babble on forever if they want to at least until the timer runs out but they have to watch out that they don't use any of the other team's trap words. If they say any of these words, the round ends immediately. The other team tends to jump from joy, slap, or be happier, or yell trap very exuberantly, and the team fails to advance in the dungeon. Note, the trap words only affect the torchbearer mm-hmm. who is giving the clues, not the other players on the team who are doing the guessing. This is important. <laughs> Now, if the Torchbearer's team does not manage to guess the word before the timer runs out, or if they've used their five guesses and the guesses have run out, they're, I'm sorry, does manage. Torchbearer's team does manage to guess the word before the timer runs out and before they run out of clues. They're going to advance to the next room of the dungeon. The other team then plays through their own round with exactly the same rules. Now, if neither team advances, the boss monster advances towards the teams. So either way, you're getting closer to an end. And mm-hmm. you don't need to worry about getting stuck in the first dungeon forever without being able to finish just playing on because nobody can get anything right. That is correct. Now, along with this, some rooms will have curses. This is the catch-up mechanic in this game. The first team to enter a room with a curse will be affected by it. And they're going to have to apply whatever it says on the curse card in their next guessing round. Now, these include all kinds of things like getting to use fewer traps, having to repeat clues, only using one words for clues, and so on. They can modify both the clues given and the guessing and the traps. And again, this is a flexible aspect of the game that you can use to ramp up or down the difficulty. Yeah, you don't have to use any traps. You can put down multiple traps, or sorry, curses, not traps, curses, multiple curses, totally up to you. Now, when any team starts in the room with the boss monster, they enter the boss fight phase. Each boss monster includes some form of restrictions, making it harder than usual for the team to win the round. Uh, These include limiting the number of guesses. 
Um, one of the monsters, I can't remember which one of it, reduces three guesses, and the difficult version of that monster reduces it to only one. Uh, the mummy I love because you have to hand out a random curse every round. There's other ones that limit what the torchbearer can say. Like, they can only give one-word clues. Now, the first team to actually win against a boss fight wins the game. Now, there is another timer, so if you are stuck in that first room, instead of just fighting the boss monster over and over again, the uh, score sheet, like the, sorry, the clue sheet, the trap word sheet, the sheet you're writing your trap words on, has eight spots on it, and if all eight rounds go by with no one defeating the boss monster, you both lose. The adventurers were lost in the dungeon, eaten, defeated by the boss monster. Now that you've given us an overview of how to play, how about you share your thoughts on this fantasy-themed party game? So I have been wanting to try this game for a long time now. Um, due to requiring exactly four players or more to play, and with Ontario just starting to loosen up on pandemic time gathering restrictions, we weren't able to get this to the table until very recently. Now that we have gotten into the table and played it with mixed groups, we played four to six players, including a mix of adults and kids, I'm quite smitten with this, especially once we started playing with the proper rules. So during the first couple of rounds we played in this game, we totally missed the rule that traps are only triggered by the torchbearer, the clue giver, not the people guessing, not by their teammates. Now the game worked with anyone setting up traps. And to be honest, one of the boss monsters makes that an official rule for that round as anyone can set off traps. What was happening though, was just traps went off every round. Like, like, Almost no one advanced. I think we got to room three in the dungeon before the monster finally came to us and someone did win. Like traps were going off left and right and there was no progression. Like it was playable, but it wasn't fun. You didn't get the joy of winning a round. It was just get beat up, lose, lose, lose. And playing with the proper rules fixes this completely. So this is a big warning to anyone out there playing this game now or picking it up. Don't make the same mistake Mo did. No. Only the clue givers can set off traps only the torch bearers trigger traps yes think of the theme of the game they're in the front of the party they're the ones that set off the traps and i guess you don't have a thief with you in this game now playing properly the game was just as much fun with four people as it was with five and with six now we did not get to the higher player counts now the box says eight plus so you could play with eight players if they're thinking four per team but this is also like a game of code names technically it happens to be the same publisher where really there's no limit to the number of players you can have on teams. You can play with any number. Now, the problem, though, is working together, in particular during the trap phase, because when you have fired player counts, how do you work together? Like, you could whisper to each other. The big thing is you don't want the opposing team to hear any of this. There's also the problem of having too many guessers because you only get five guesses and a guess said by anyone counts with too many peoples on a team. You're just going to burn through those guesses really quickly because by the book, you can't consult with the other players while guessing. So uh, watch out for that person who yells random words, words out during party games, hoping for a hit battleship style. Yes, this is not the game where you just shout out Elvis at the beginning of every round just because you know that's one of the clues because you played before. Now, when we play, what we do so to, to remove the, the talking to each other and the whispering is we just pass the sheet around. And what we do is everyone writes down two, assuming they can think of at least two. So you write down two, write down two, you write down two. And even if you only allowed three traps, we then all look at those and pick three of the ones we want to keep. Or we write down four each or whatever. And we'll go back and forth like, oh, I got a good one. Like, that's all they'll say is, oh, I got a good one, right? You're not giving anything away. And this works good with small groups. But like, if I had eight people on my side, I can't see passing. Were you going to pass this paper to eight different people? Now, maybe if you could physically separate the two teams, possibly in different rooms, then higher player pounds would work because then you can discuss it. Yeah, definitely important to get some separation in there if you want to have any sort of hope of talking, even yeah. if you've just moved to opposite sides of your FLGS and there's enough other games going on that, you know, you can hide your talk amongst the noise. Now, what I love the most about this game is the thought process you go to in both main phases of the game. So like the first few games you play, at least with us, the, the trap writing phase, we were just thinking of words that fit the clue, right? It said axe and we're like, um, wood chop um tin man um you know and we're just thinking of ourselves then one game we noticed there's a meta game here we completely missed realizing who's going to be giving the clues 
is a big part of deciding which words should be your trap words. Not, and who's going to be giving the, the guessing as well, but more so the clue giver. Like our daughter is probably not going to think of melee weapon for axe, whereas she may think sharper hit. Right. So you're not going to expect your 12 year old to come up with the same clues as a 45 year old gamer. <laughs> yes, exactly. And same with the guessing, right? To twist it around, too, is you have to watch who's guessing that the, the eight year old is going to have a different view of the world than an older person. Then the other part of this game, the guessing phase, I love being the clue giver and trying not to say words my opponents have written down and coming up with roundabout ways to describe things in order to get players to say something. Now, the interesting part here too, though, is after now playing the game multiple times um, with some of the same players, my approach has shifted too. And a part of that would be knowing who's going to be picking the trap words which is the same as the opposite side, right? Like I know Deanna is probably going to write this down and I know that the Genevieve is going to write this down. And then there's, the, I played now a bunch of games with Deanna. So now there's the whole Vizini Viz death scene from Princess Bride, right? Where I'm like, well, I can't say that because they probably wrote down that. So it's so obvious, but wait, if they knew, I knew it was so obvious, they probably wrote it down or maybe, uh, oh, I'm going to avoid that word. But then what if they knew that I'd probably avoid that word so they, that whole thing? Aha, you fool. You fell victim to one of the classic blunders, the most famous of which is never get involved in a land war in Asia, but only slightly well less, less well known is this. Never go against a Sicilian when death is on the line. <laughs> now, overall, I've been shocked by how much we've actually been enjoying trap words. Uh, the most shocking part is actually how much my daughters love it, uh, including the one who normally has difficulty with words, grammar, and spelling. I think being able to be on a team has really opened her up to the game. And I love her unique way of looking at the world. Having her be the team giver, or sorry, the, the clue giver, the torch bearer, is fascinating just to see the way her brain works compared to the rest of us. I think that is fantastic. Yeah, it's amazing how just a little bit of support like that can give confidence enough to really change things around for some people. Now, if I did have to complain about something, uh, the only thing I can really mention is just that this game is so different from other party games. The way this game's work is rather unique and different from most guessing games. And it takes a while from some people for some people to get it. Like, I've honestly experienced this. And it's not like I'm teaching brand new players who've never played a hobby game before like I'm, I'm talking about experienced players who played many games and i think the designers realize this because they included a short example of play meant to be a way to teach the game which i do think helps though i honestly think the best way is just dive in and start playing like if you have a couple people who know the game have them be the first clue givers because they know how it works. That way they can walk the teams through their trap phase because they played before and then give an actual example of legal clues and how they work and then drop some of the stuff, right? Like don't worry about the five clue limit the first round or something like that just to get used to it. And then when you have that one person who does blurt out four things in a row, go, remember, you only get five guesses. Don't just blurt things out. I also suggest you take advantage of the additional dungeon tiles. Like I find it odd. They don't give you like a simple setup where the rooms are like one, two, three, four, and you just play through, or even one, two, three, you got one clue, two clues, three clues, ditch the things, and maybe not even have a boss monster. It's the first person to advance to room four wins. Use this stuff, use the other stuff in the box to make it simple. The other thing you can do too, is you don't have to start in the same room. And I think a fun way to play versus the kids is to start the dungeon at level one, and put the kids in there, but then put a level eight or 10 before it. And the, the parents need to get out of the, the oubliette before they actually get to explore the dungeon. I think that'd be a cool way to do it. I actually really dig the amount of variability that's here because of the curse tiles. Uh, all the monsters, there's two levels presented. So you can randomize them or you can just start with a higher level. You could also do the thing where the parents have to fight the tough dragon and the kids fight the easy dragon. Fair warning though, those curses can be rough. So you may want, you may be tempted to splatter them everywhere. You might want to back up on that. It's really impressive 
how flexible and variable the difficulty level yeah. of this game is because i'm sure you could also just shuffle through your curse deck pull out the really nasty ones and only play with yeah. ones that are of an easier level totally fair and there are some nasty clues one of them is echo you have to repeat every word you say and you're the clue giver and this is not a game where you say cup you say vessel for transporting water to be ingested because you are worried they wrote cup and mug and drink and whatever right. coffee right that's what so like you're not trying to give one so instead you're like vessel vessel for for and so on i'm not going to get into it that was a horrible one we dealt with and and props to my mother-in-law for managing to pull it off so someone in our chat room has always caught this but trap words takes the basic concept of games like taboo but puts the control in the player's hands and more interestingly, the opponent's hands. This is an extremely solid and fun word guessing game with a unique theme. If you dig word guessing games, I would hope at this point, you've already got a copy in your cart or you've already sent a text message to your local game store to hold you a copy. This is especially true if you dig the dungeon crawl theme. Now, if you're not normally a word guessing fan, you still might want to check this out. This is so unique and does things in such a different way. It may just win you over. Yeah, I don't think we can understate the difference of picking your own trap words versus a game like Taboo, where there's a fixed mm -hmm. list of words you can't say that were designed by the designer of the game. Yes. And added to that, the, the replayability is infinite here as opposed to a game where you could eventually play through all the cards and have memorized the answers. Like personally, at this point, I expect this game to get a lot of play. Like we're already playing it quite a bit just with like uh, local people coming over and going to go into the in-laws and, and playing there. But like, Oh, once, once we get out into public cons, Epic game, like, like this is a perfect extra life gaming marathon game, like a, a fantastic game for those type of events. Now, before we do sign off, tonight i do want to add a footnote while reviewing this game i personally couldn't help but compare it to letter jam and i'm not saying they should be compared they're kind of apples to oranges but it's the fact that both of these games are from the same company they're both word games they're both kind of sold as party games and while i got them both on the same day <laughs> so of the two games i think each is great but in their own way and where i think both perfectly fit in my collection is for two totally different game nights if I'm about to go down with my small group of friends that I get together with on a regularly on a weeknight, and I'm going to sit and we, we play games, we tend to play heavier Euro games that I'm, I'm going to grab Letter Jam. It's a, it's a heavier game with a lot more thinking. There's deduction required. Plus it's also cooperative and also only requires two players. So this is something Deanna and I can play just the two of us on a date night, or we can play with one of the kids instead of both of them being required. All right. So I'm going to a public play game of party adult beverages we're here to have fun i'm gonna grab trap words it's a lighter more fun well not more fun it, it, it's a different type of fun it's a fun laughing competitive party game that gets everyone interacting and laughing with each other and you know getting mad at each other in that gameplay mad like oh i can't believe you said this or why didn't you say that the kind of stuff you get from party games personally i am very happy to have both in my collection so thank you cge both these games are going to keep hitting my table as time goes on well, that's it for our look at Trap Words from CGE. I invite you to read more about this game in the review section over at the blog at tabletopbellhop.com.